If you're a guest, you're our honored guest tonight, please make sure to reach out to one of our members. We have a large prayer list. Uh, please refer to the bulletin for all of those listed, any of the sick and shut-ins. We do want to um, point out that the prayers for Joyce Stein family. Their mother died this morning in Ohio, so we want to remember those when we pray. Expect it, Mother Leah Brown, and we also want to rejoice in that Paige Bolin has returned to her church family. A heartfelt sympathy goes out to our sister, Ruby Richards, wife of Lewis, mother of Michelle and Suzette, and beloved, beloved grandmother, passed away this week from complications with her liver. In lieu of flowers, the family has requested that donations be extended to the land to expand. We also have a note from Russell Combs. Thanks to all who made the Russell Combs moving experience a great success. They recorded a new Guinness Book world record, one hour. A great crew, especially thanks to Coco, Renee, and Mary for pushing them in and keeping them going. What a great Christian family. Love you all, Russell. We also have a card here from OT expressing his uh, gratitude for our thoughts and prayers, so this will be posted in the bulletin. I have one other note. 20, 2017 college football has arrived. We're going to be a part of the beginning of this year's college football season. If you're a WV, Dev, North Carolina fan, no, I'm sorry. No, if you're a WVU fan, Virginia Tech fan, or just co like college football, come join us on Sunday, September 3rd, after evening services in the Fellowship Hall to support your favorite team. Bring your favorite football game food to share. Wear your favorite sports gear to support your team and be ready to fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ while we do our part to welcome in the 2017 college football season. If you have any questions or need any additional information, please see Dan Poe or Rick Kimbler. Softball practice Tuesday at 7 p.m. for all of those that will be playing this year. So let's start our worship service with a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come out and worship you and praise you. We're in awe of you and we celebrate the amazing life of Ruby Richards. We ask that you would comfort the family and give them peace, love, and understanding. Ruby has been eloquently described many times as precious. And what we ask is that we would all be precious, not only in this church family, but in your eyes. Please keep that family in your prayers. Please be with us as these young men lead our service tonight. Give them the strength, the courage to be warriors for you and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Our scripture reading will be taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Again, that is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is uh, in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Good evening, church family. To all our guests, you are our honored guest tonight. As you can see, tonight's a very special occasion. If you look at your text in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, Thou therefore my son. Paul felt that Timothy was his son 
in the spirit. And I've had the privilege this summer of teaching these young men, and I consider them my son in the faith as well. And I've taught many of their fathers, and their fathers taught their sons. So in verse 2 it says, The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, commit thou unto faithful men who will teach others also. So tonight we enjoy the, when I say the third generation, is Elias in service tonight. Today's first song will be Sing and Be Happy, eight, uh, page 841. Again, that is Sing and Be Happy, page 841. And we'll be singing the first and third verses. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust me, his promise is grand. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. If we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky, when it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. With the hope and trust them each day, we shall have pleasures untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. I'll be singing This World's Not My Home, 684. Again, that is This World's Not My Home, 684. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Today I'll be singing Love of to Me on page 421, verses 1 through 3. Again, that's page 421, Love of to Me, verses 1 through 3. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now say, am I? Love did me, love did 
in me when nothing else could help. Love in me, love in me, love in me when nothing else could help. Love in me, souls in danger. Look above. Jesus completely says he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, but us his will obey. He is Savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. I'll be singing as the deer panted for the water on page 843. Again, page 843. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire. Please turn with me to blue, uh, 851 Blue Skies and Rainbows. Again, that's 851 Blue Skies and Rainbows. I'll be saying the first and last verse. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are what I can see when my Lord is living in me. I know that Jesus is well and alive. Green valleys, the beauty that surrounds. 
Good evening. I'm going to talk about the purpose of a good soldier. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Again, that 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a good soldier. It's not an easy being a young man of God in this world. It's a battle. Like the verse says, we share in the troubles and challenges we have, and we accept them as a good soldier. It's not an easy life in the regular armed services. My grandfather or papa was in the military. He's old. I think it may have been World War I. <laughs> My papa said it was hard. Here are some hardships he endured. First, sometimes he had remote assignments, which means he went alone without his family. Second, he would have to go weeks without talking to his family. Third, there were assignments where he would go on and never be able to talk about due to security clearance. He still can't talk about it to this day. And lastly, he had to learn to take strict orders. He had to obey his commanding officer without question. A person that is a soldier is to please his commanding officer. We as Christians are to live like men of God and to serve to please our commanding officer, Jesus Christ. So rather than to play video games or sports all day, we study to prepare and practice to serve our commanding officer, Jesus Christ. We know that if we do this, we can spend eternity with Christ. Are you a good soldier? Good evening, church family. Today I'll be talking about being an athlete for Christ. Please open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Again, that's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. It states that, and also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. In the two years I've competed in gymnastics, I've won over 100 medals. I'm the state champion for South Carolina, and I took second in regionals. I moved up three levels from level five to level eight, which it's very exciting because that never really happens. Now, since I'm a level eight in gymnastics, I can compete and meet my goal for the national title and work even harder to meet the goal of being in the Junior Olympics. The world today is out of control. We live in very bad times. I would compare the world today to Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis chapter 19 explains how corrupt they were and what's like today. Men were sleeping with men, women were sleeping with women. The whole city was corrupt. There was no love for God, except for Lot and his family. While they were fleeing the city, Lot's wife looked back, longing for that life. Therefore, God turned her to a pillar of salt. Just how many Christians are there in this world? I mean true Christians. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14 t tells us, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Think about this for a moment. Have you ever seen a sky view of a football field? When you consider the number of people there, how many of them do you think are saved? That is where being an athlete for Christ comes in for me. I know I'm young, but I am strong in my faith. I take part in last leaders so I can become the number one athlete for Christ. I want to save souls so they will have the same promise as, a, as I do, which is eternal life with God. The way to reach the, that goal is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Verse 5. And if a man also strives for masteries, yet he, is he not crowned except his strive lawfully. The easy to read version of this scripture reads Athletes in a race must obey all rules to win. Studying God's word is essential to be able to teach others. I know the more I study and teaching God's word will help me in bringing souls to Christ, so they too can be an athlete for Christ. Please turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, and I'll be talking to you about being a good farmer. Again, this is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. 
The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Here Paul, here Paul is telling Timothy that Christians are like good, good farmers. In the first part of the verse, Paul says that to get the first fruits, farmers must be hardworking. There's an old saying, a farmer's work is never done. Good farmers work hard, they get up early and go to bed late. Farmers have to repair the soil, plant good seeds, give, give them plenty of water, keep the weeds pulled, and keep the plants protected. If a good and hardworking farmer, oh wait, what? If a farmer is good and hardworking, next Paul tells Timothy they get the first fruits. Farmers must love their crop. It helps them work harder by taking the first fruits. It helps them know how they have done. If they don't like their fruit, they won't be very good at growing it. Like, I wouldn't be a good cucumber farmer because I hate cucumbers. <laughs> what does this verse mean for us? Like farmers, we can't just throw out seed and hope they grow. We have to make sure they, the soil is not rocky or too dry or too wet. We need to plant good seed and make sure they get a good seed and hope they get enough sunlight and water. As Christians, we must be hard workers. We must study the Bible, pray, and sing praises, even teach others and help those in need. As Christians, we must be first to partake of the fruits. Is seeing those we teach being saved, it is why we must love the fruit. Are you enjoying the first fruits? Are you sharing the Lord's fruits with others? If not, don't be afraid to share the good news. Are you guys are good farmers? Good evening. Today I'll be talking to you about um, today I'll be talking about the student we should be. If you will please turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7. It reads, Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Whenever I walk into karate class, my teacher knows if I have been practicing or not. And not just practicing on Tuesdays and Thursdays, actually practicing every day. I have to do 50 push-ups in under a minute and 50 sit-ups in under a minute. Karate class is kind of like Bible class because in Bible class, when I walk into Bible class, my teacher knows if I have been practicing, well, studying or not. And not just studying on Sundays and Wednesdays, studying every day. Let's say um, I was in karate sparring against this guy and he was throwing a whole bunch of sloppy, and sloppy punches and kicks at me. I know if he has been practicing or not, just like my teacher does. And the same goes to the church. If someone's trying to defend the truth and, and he's not putting scripture out there and he doesn't know any, I know if he has been studying the scripture or not, just like my teacher does. My goal in karate is to become a black belt. But before, but before, like when I start karate, I'm a white belt. And as the days go on, I get rankings to get my next belt. And the black belt kind of looks like this. This is my dad's, by the way. If, if you will, please turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It reads, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We all should study more every day and practice more. And like I said, we have to study every day and, and do better with the word. And um, we all should study more. We all. Can you, stud, can you defend the truth? Are you a good student of God's word?
being the church family. Paul tells us that the good news is Jesus being raised from the dead. Will you turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8? Again, that is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. The good news is that God has made a way for people to have their sins forgiven and live with them forever in heaven. Paul tells us that the good news is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Will you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. Again, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. God's plan from the beginning of time was to send Jesus to save mankind through his death, burial, and resurrection. He sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins. Will you turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses, uh, verses 3 through 6. Again, that is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. <coughs> you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. So wouldn't you want to be his soldier, his athlete, his farmer, and his student? And wouldn't you want to live for the one who died for you and gave you his word to live by and the hope of heaven to live for? And wouldn't you want to tell others so they can be saved and save others? And if you haven't been saved, come forward. We will baptize you for the remission of your sins. And if you, have been, if you, and if you haven't been living like you should, come forward and we will have the elders pray for you. Will you come? Let thy blessings fall. 